Welcome to Artist Spotlight. Today I'm talking with Chris Robb. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. We have currently your art in the chambers, and this series you call your grid series? Yes, Is that right? grids, yes. Um, because? Obviously, because it's grids. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 16 small squares in the larger square. The main group, originally, they were all four foot by four foot, and I envisioned it as a group that could be put together or taken apart. Here it's taken apart. I had a show earlier in the year where it was put together as a eight foot by 16 foot, one single piece. Now the, these other three pieces back here are four feet by five feet, they're newer ones. So, but the idea was I think it can just multiply to keep yeah. going. Yeah. And, you know. but before we talk more about that, let's find out a little bit about you. So, where do you come from? Did you grow up here? I grew up here. We moved here uh, when I was seven from Ohio. Uh, my parents picked Orlando because it was in the middle, middle of the state. They just said, let's go down there and uh, ended up uh, in Winter Park, right off Glenridge Way, went to Audubon, Glenridge, Winter Park High, then I went to Valencia. I wasn't a great student in high school. I know now because I have a short attention span, but I uh, ended up going to Valencia and there I met a great teacher named Q Throm, who I think you probably knew. Yeah. Um, and we reconnected later in life and it was really great because I got to tell her how influential she was. She told me about two things. You can, you can actually be an artist. It's something you can be because I, I drew since I was a little kid and I never, my mom was an art teacher but I didn't know you could be an artist really. And she also told me about a thing called graphic design. And so I also focused on that and that's under how I really kind of made my living through many years. So um, yeah, all the way up through UCF, went to UCF, uh, went to Florida for a year and then UCF where I met Steve Lotz, Godnick who just passed away, uh, Eiffels, uh, and a guy named Mike Elbeck, who was the print teacher, uh, printmaking teacher, and I had Chavda for graphic design. So a great group of teachers also. And I'm also in touch with Steve Lott still, so it's really great to, to uh, kind of reconnect with teachers that were influential to me. And you stayed right here and started your career and have been here? Well, the, literally, I got out of, back then UCF was on quarters. I got out after the winter quarter, left that week for New York City. Those couple of years were so informative in my art career because it was such a kind of wild time in New York City, especially the Lower East Side. There was a place called Club 57 that all the young artists hung out in. Back then it was so cheap too. Like I had a fifth floor walk up that was probably a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, but we'd, we'd go to this Club 57, they'd always have these group shows. And uh, Herring was there, and Basquiat, and, uh, Kenny Scharf, and uh, Donald Backler, a lot of artists that ended up going on and really making a name for themselves. But back then it was just like these big kind of free-for-all party group mm -hmm. shows. It was also very influential because just it was just all out in the street. You know, you're walking around, a lot of bands. Uh, we went and saw a lot of great you know, punk bands back in 1980. And uh, so it was, a, it was a time, it was very influential, I think, on my work. Uh, there was a real kind of attitude of like do it yourself, you know. Uh, coming out of the 70s, that were very uh, kind of taken with minimalist and the minimalism and a uh, very academic approach to art. This was like screw academics, let's just go do it ourselves. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, a lot of people out making art in the street. And uh, I got my first job, I worked at Utrecht, an art supply store up there. And then I got a job at Macy's in their advertising department. It was my first job using graphic design. And really liked that too, because there was like a photo studio there. And mm -hmm. um, So then I came back here and <clears throat> started working back here and kept painting, drawing, but had a job, a full-time job as a art director. Got married, had kids, all that stuff. When you are um, creating art, uh, is do you have music on? Is music an, an inspiration? Yes, all the time. Lots, very eclectic, a lot of music. So everything from the newest things I can find to uh, Miles, Coltrane, you know, any kind of Bill Evans uh, to 80s, to punk, Joy Division, 
Yeah, always have music going. And do you paint every day? Yes, very workmanlike. Every go in every day. Uh, even if I don't necessarily have anything going, I, I think that's how you progress. Is just kind of working through it, trying things. I have like tons of things I'm doing, and then sometimes it congeals into like this. I started digging back because I have some a lot of pieces that I did in 80, 81, 82. And like this kind of wild boar thing that's on a lot of these things. It was a stencil I used a lot back then. Dug that back out, started reusing it. Um, so yeah, I'm in there every day, pretty much seven days a week. You know, I'm kind of, kind of obsessive about things. And I always say my work's about sort of an intersection between absolute freedom and complete control. And I think this work's actually a good example. The grids have a lot of control, but sure. within those grids, there's a lot of freedom. Yeah. And um, so that's kind of the approach I take. But it's, it really is a kind of work. If I'm not working on painting, I'm looking at painting, I'm studying painting, I'm listening to artists. You know, I have my favorites that I kind of obsess over and get to know and buy books. and. Right, so yeah, it's basically a life consumed by it. Is there anything that uh, you're working towards or uh, something you'd like to accomplish that you haven't? I always want to progress. I think that my, my absolute heroes, the two in particular, Matisse and de Kooning, and the reason is both of them in their 80s found complete new bodies of work. And I just always thought, God, that's as an artist, that's what you, you don't want to get stuck. I always say, uh, style is a prison, technique is a trap, because you don't want to get stuck in something. And those guys, they found, even when they're 80, Matisse was laying in bed sick and he started doing the cutouts. And I think painters are lucky though, because I think you can only get better with age if you're open to it, because that's, it's a accumulation of your life experience should be coming into this. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, I. I the only thing I'd say, I, I look forward to my ambition are for bigger and better shows, finding venues to want to have me and show sure work. Okay. Do you envision having a paintbrush in your hand when you die? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I, I want to keep going until the day I die. Hopefully I'm able to, you know, if you're lucky. I mean, my, my wife and I always talked about, uh, there was a, another painter who just passed away, he was 102, named Pierre Solage, one of the great French painters. And he painted only in black, but he called it black and light. He had his own museum, and I saw a video of him and his wife wandering around this museum they built for his work in the south of France. And they were both like 92 at the time. I was like, that's what we need to be doing. We have a museum built for me, maybe in Florida, because I spent most of my life here. And you and I will be wandering around making sure they hang the work right on our Great. Eyes. So that's a goal. All right. Well, I look forward to the Chris Robb Museum here in. Uh, that sounds Orange pretentious, County. but you know, you got to have goals, right? Okay. Thank you, Chris, for uh, talking with me today. Enjoyed it. And thank you for watching this edition of Artist Spotlight with Chris Robb. That's R O B B. And if you'd like to get more information about his work, go to his website, www.chrisrob.com.